any viral infection actually viral infections usually most of the uh, respiratory viral infections the common influenza virus the common cold virus all these viruses they you know uh, trigger hyper reactivity in the airways by which i mean that the airways become more sensitive the uh, muscles become more excited so they go into spasm the uh, the glands the mucus glands become more hypertrophied they secrete more mucus both of which lead to more airway spasm and uh, a narrowing of the, air, the airways. So it's a typical, uh, you know, um, effect, post-recovery uh, effect from a viral infection. Of course, this gets, uh, this is the same thing we have been observing in COVID as well. So at the end of the day, COVID is also caused by a coronavirus, which is a respiratory virus. Okay. So, so that is why we see more of these uh, asthma symptoms in uh, people who have, ex- who have had a recent viral infections. But not uh, all of these uh, need to be asthma. Some of them, many of the post-COVID patients we see, they come with cough and a bit of breathlessness and a bit of chest tightness and wheeze. But when we do all the tests, uh, not necessarily everyone has asthma. They may just have what we call reactive airways or a post-infective kind of hyper-reactive airways. So it may settle down in, in, in few weeks or months' time, it may settle down. So we have to keep a close watch on them. Uh, with uh, a, a test to make sure that they don't develop overt asthma or full-blown asthma. Many of them with some simple treatment, they may respond to these treatments and recover fully. But some of them may go on to develop asthma as well in the future. So that's why I said we need to keep an eye on these people who develop symptoms in the post-COVID uh, setting or in a post-viral infection setting. 